Oh yeah, oh yeah. Beautiful morning to go weld on a little H brace. Yesterday I welded up four, no, no, three corners and three H braces. And I've got two more corners to weld up today. This job is only about, I don't know how many miles, three, one, two, three, three or four miles down the road from my house. <laughs> don't happen every day. No, this uh, distant family member of mine, actually of Kayla's, so being in-law or whatever, he does excavation work. And uh, I mean, he offers welding too, but like he don't hardly do any, any of that anymore. He always has me or my brother-in-law or a friend of ours, you know, he always hires the welding part out, usually. I mean, he still does a little bit, but... Um, so anyway, he built this pond, and they're fencing off the pond. And, uh, I meant to ask him why. If I see him today, I'm gonna ask him, the guy that we're doing this for, um, I'm gonna ask him why he fenced off the pond. Because I don't know. I'm curious. Um, but anyway, so he's fencing off the pond. He's just putting barbed wire, but he, uh... The, that distant family member of mine, he come in and drove all the posts, didn't even concrete them in. I'm sure some of you have heard of this, some of you may not have, but he just takes a track hoe and he, of course you gotta have more pipe this way, but he took some two and seven eighths uh, pipe and just drove it in the ground five, six feet, as much as he can. He's that type of person, he wants his, he don't want his fence leaning over or his uh, H-braces to pull out of the ground or anything. So drove all the posts in the ground, and then I come in here and weld the braces in, just putting two, two and seven eighths braces in there. And then they're gonna stretch the wire themselves. But yeah, yeah, this is, I, I done some work for this guy last year, along with another guy about an hour away um, from the house. This type of work is where it all started for me. You know, the most commonly asked question I get from, uh, viewers, those of you that watch my videos, are how do I get into pipelining, you know, how do I get my start? And this is this is how I got started. I, I, I went to welding school in, in high school. It was offered for free, you know, it, it counted as like a math credit and a science or something, I don't know, it counted as some credits. So we, you know, went to a different, uh, went to a trade school my junior and senior year for half a day for two years. Um, so that's why I learned how to weld but as far as like actually getting out and doing like real world experience, I worked in a shop right after high school. And while I worked at that shop, I was all, I was putting together my first welding truck. As I was, you know, once I got it put together enough, I always, I was always doing like fence work and stuff for uh, family, for, I mean, just anyone and everyone, you know. Uh, I, I just, people knew that I welded and they knew that I had a welding truck and and that I was a mobile welder, so they, you know, called me if they needed anything done, you know. So that's where it all started with me, and boy, am I thankful for it after a year like last year, because it's what's paid the bills, you know. Uh, <laughs> by the way, last week's video, if you haven't seen it, I made a video on answering the question, do I regret joining the 798? And I didn't want that video, I didn't mean for it to be like a poor, poor me. Uh, I don't want nobody to get the wrong idea whenever I post videos like that. I appreciate everyone that reached out, and, you know, offered advice here and there. I mean, hopefully it helps other viewers, you know, if you commented in the comment section and stuff. But I, I've been off work from Pipeline for almost a year, but I've had rig welding work, working out of this truck. So. So it's not like I've been off, you know, just, uh, you know, no money coming in whatsoever. Like there's, I've been working just not as much, you know, so I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea. The reason I posted that video was because I wanted to, like those of you that have considered joining the union or, you know, you're still, still in school and you're, you know, trying to decide whether to start out union, non-union, whatever. I just wanted to, I like documenting that stuff, that way it will help those of you, you know, sharing my experience. Everybody's everybody's experience is different, but I just 
wanted to share my experience as I go throughout my career just so you can see real life somebody's situation what's going on you know um, by the way side note if you are considering joining the union or starting out non-union I would advise starting out wherever you have a connection that might be the union if you know somebody in the union go the union route if you know somebody on a non-union pipeline and you don't know anybody in the union start out with non-union work just anything to start getting experience so anyway talk about that in another video but yeah I'm super super thankful for all this fence work and rig welding work because I mean it still pays you know good money like to be doing this type of work now it's not steady and that's what I mean by it, it was a slow year last year like I don't get 60 hours a week by no means but uh, it's just it, it's it's way better than unemployment and way better than nothing at all and I enjoy doing it you know so anyway yeah 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 oh my god such a rough rough terrain it reminds me of of the right away of the pipeline right away I'm riding free, so come along. Name that tune. For those of you that have kids, you probably know what that tune is. Kayla's watching our nephew today, and uh, when I'm working for myself, I don't get I don't get a real early start. Well, depends on the job, obviously. If I got a bunch of work, then I will get an early start. But I knew I only had a couple of. Uh, corners to build her to put in so you know half a day's worth of work ain't no sense in getting in no hurry so anyway I was there for a couple hours this morning uh, hanging out with him and eating breakfast and stuff and he watches spirit I guess I'll give it up <laughs> here it is the pond and the H braces just looks like a bunch of dirt doesn't it <laughs> H braces kind of blend in. <clears throat> All right. So, this is where we started yesterday morning. It's right here. That corner, that corner. And you can see some back in here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, looks like I got one corner left down here. And the other corner's on the other side of this pond, but that's the pond there, as you can see. Yeah. Oh, and then here's the other braces that I welded yesterday. Okay. Oh, big finger. Corner there and that edge brace there. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Got a low corner. I guess we're gonna start right over here. Looks like a good place to start, don't it? Look at this pond. It's pretty neat.
Boy, I just thought this is the neatest thing. Had to show you all this. Clamps, baby. Clamps. Yeah, buddy. On to the next one. That's right. Got this one all done. Now we're headed down yonder. All the way down yonder here. All the way. Oh, there we can see them now. All right. Right down there. To do the exact same. Put four braces in, baby. We'll be good to go. I was also going to show y'all my, my toolbox. I reorganized it. I don't know. You may not be able to tell. If you've seen my uh, rig tour video, the second one I made, I showed you inside my boxes. Well, I've, I've redone some things. See right away that I took this shock out because I get tired of them going bad and they cost, I don't know, kind of a lot of money. So anyway, I put this old school kickstand in here. Just on a, just on a nut down in there. And yeah, I just flop that down lid closes it's kind of a mouse trap you gotta watch out for this old school thing this thing will wind blows or hit a bump that'll fall down and but you know we just don't worry about that right now i um, probably need to drive around with with that down anyway so anyway i used to have all this over here yeah i moved them over here sockets over here also added a set of sockets right here some snap-on sockets one of the only snap-on tools i have these set of uh, sockets here and then I put all my pliers and crescents and wrenches right here I'm um, just kind of a bigger area for all this stuff because it was watered up here and watered up all in here and uh, took out a you can see I cut a cut that out there was a bar this bar here went all the way around there but see I wanted to get my electrical stuff all together these kind of pointless to have in here because I don't ever use rivets ever and I got a million of them but uh anyway I got them I do need them but what I was mostly concerned about was my electrical stuff so I put all my uh electrical stuff in here I got my butane to refill my torch uh, for like melting connections and stuff I got wire strippers butane and dikes in here along with like I said the refill and um, this uh, multimeter but then I got this other container, an old hose kit repair um, box where I got all my connectors. So I got all I got to do is move this stuff off the top and I grab this container and this container and I'm ready to do like wiring, you know, like uh, for tail lights and such. And then I redone my, oh, also what I used to have here was like random stuff, like odds and ends, nuts and bolts, um, torch tips something else I think just a random container so anyway I took all my nuts random nuts and bolts and I divided them put all the bolts here nuts lock washers flat washers and then um, bigger nuts and uh, that way it's a little bit easier to find something I need instead of digging through the whole thing so done that then you can see here I put my torch tips in here extra lugs here I don't really like this but extra lugs that was shut, but now, anyway, whatever. We'll work on that later. Anyway, yeah. Good few months off and and some uh, motivation. You get some stuff organized. And then this, these are kind of random tools. I don't, I do not love these right here, but for whenever I get back on the pipeline, I got my, uh, uh, this is a donut. It goes in a banding crawler, but I welded it to here. And uh, that's just, a lot nicer for some situations whenever you're uh, making cuts I got my knuckle extra donut and then I welded these little brackets for my torch that's my straight torch it's my regular torch I use every day and then these have always been here but I hardly ever use them because this box would get full and it was just kind of a pain but anyway I put my hammer there now uh, short no long barrel short barrel and then my long good combination square that's longer than average for like I beam and whatnot but uh, anyway short, short barrel uh, files and spacing bands here and then one huge add-on was this piece of flat right here I 
welded it from here all the way here to keep this box from falling up against my torches and uh, for my hitch, just for my BMW hitch. And uh, anyway, so so that's kind of nice to keep that off of there. And then just protective equipment here, um, templates for branch uh, drill bits, torpedo levels, uh, two foot level, and uh, uh, stuff for fence work here. So anyway, yeah, didn't plan on giving you a full tour of my toolbox, but uh, I just am excited to uh, get excited to redo stuff. It's just nice to uh, to to redo things and, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. So there you have it. Kayla does not like that I cut on my painted bed, but man, this thing is six six years old. And it's all, the bottom of it is kind of rusted from all the salt and stuff and all this from uh, up the northeast. It's just, you know, the paint's not good on it anyway, and I've been wanting to do some modifications. I really want to build another bed, but in the meantime, just do some modifications to get a, get us by. So, anyway, like I said, on to the next one. Alright, we're down here at the last corner of the project here. Some of you might be wondering how I go about uh, doing these. Pretty neat that he just pushed these in the ground, huh? I love it. Depending on if there's rock or not, I don't know that that would work in every part of the uh, soil. But anyway, he told me that they didn't worry too much about getting these level. And for something like this where you're not too worried about it, you know, it's not for show, you're just putting a little barbed wire on it, um, it's not too big a deal. So that's fine, but what I do in this situation, and it's situation dependent, but for this situation here, a lot of times I try to put the top bar in first, but since the post ain't level, I'll measure the bottom closest to the ground to get my measurement and then I'll put it in the top. Sometimes that means putting a strap on it to bring it together, but then I I more or less kind of level them up by the pieces that I'm putting in. So that's what I do. I measure the bottom, put the top brace in first, and then uh, go from there. As far as height, that's all personal preference also, but five foot is like, I don't know, average to me i guess i always just use five foot or like right here as a general rule or maybe right under my chin i don't know i always just kind of look at it every time i put a brace in i'll actually stand back and then i'll look at it in in comparison to like the ground and where it's going and all that just so the the braces will most likely try to be in line with the barbed wire chances are it may not be because i don't have a string you know or i didn't run a string line from this post all the way down to the other one but you can eyeball a lot of that you know so a lot of it is just with fence what i've learned and the little i've done over the years it's just uh, you want appealing to the eye more than anything um you want it to go with the ground so with these corners i just try to i try to just line them up you know with the ground more or less and then as far as the space in between i've done 32 inches here between these looks a little wide but uh again it kind of depends on the client and and how far apart your wires are going to be i guess but so just kind of look at it is, is kind of all i do and just kind of go with it unless they want a specific space but this guy didn't care he just wanted corners in so i just kind of uh used my imagination and my experience and uh just uh put them in so yeah yeah one more trick before i uh finish up here is most i don't want to say most tape measures but a lot of tape measures i get that i try to get are usually three inches right here so i just butt the back of my tape to the pipe and uh, that's how and then i add three inches you know which is what the tape is so that's how i measure to get an accurate measurement and uh yeah yeah let's finish this thing up and go to the house come on right in the daggum way, I can't see nothing. I mean, I can't see nothing, boys. I mean, daggum. What do I got to do here? No fine. Yeah, boy. Roughly. Roughly. Five foot. Yeah, man. What did I say? 69? I said 69. Yeah, yeah. 66 plus 3. 69. Come on. Yellow. Yellow.
That is it. It is now noon. Time to go grab some lunch. Good little three hour project. Got two corners done. This deal, this deal is done. He didn't want caps on them, so I guess he said it'll just fill up with water and go to this pond, he said. No, I don't, I don't think he's too worried about it, but uh, he's not worried about it, neither am I. So it's a done deal. Got, I think, five corners and 3H braces. And it took me a day and, a, and three hours, you know, nine. Took me about, oh, and I fixed the gate yesterday too. That took me about an hour, so. So nine plus three, 12 hours. 12 hour project. Done deal. I don't know what I'm gonna do now. Go to the house, I guess. Beautiful day, it warmed up. I have to shuck these long johns. I already had to shuck the hoodie. Yeah, that is it. It's a day in the life of a laid off pipeliner. <laughs> no, but on a serious note, that's what we do to uh, stay afloat, you know? Just weld. Weld, weld, weld. As long as this truck's running, we're making a little money. We're paying our bills. Thankful for every bit of it. So, can't complain. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, I'm sure there's tons of questions. Always when I'm, when I'm filming, I'm always like, man, what could they be asking? What are they asking right now? Some of you have asked, how do you know what to charge for a truck? I need to make a video on that. But, in short... Back whenever I started running my truck, I just kind of, from working at that steel supply shop and just hearing the rumor of what rig welders got paid out on drilling rigs and stuff, back then it was like 50 an hour, 40, 50. You know, that was 10 plus years ago. Around here, it's anywhere from 60, 65 to 85, 90 bucks an hour. It just depends on your experience and just who, who you're working for, you know. Uh, but your experience and your reputation, I think, is how how guys go about uh doing it but um depends on location to where you're at in the country but anyway we can talk more in detail about all that but yeah that's how i build a little h brace hope you guys enjoyed this video we'll see y'all next friday my advice for this week is be diverse as in be willing to do more than just pipeline weld especially when starting out even if that means a shop job you know you know say you start out single hand you know uh in uh, like building trades or like a factory type work. So you start out like that, and you don't have a truck, room, truck and welder yet. Well, maybe you got laid off, maybe you've been off for a couple weeks, need to go to work, be willing to go work at a steel supply shop making 12 bucks an hour or something, you know, just to, you know, stay learning if nothing else. You know, unemployment's an all right option and pipeline welders are known to draw unemployment. But when starting out, I really advise, I mean, I would like to stay more busy than I am now, but just for that experience, you know, stay stay busy doing something because the more that you're doing welding in general, the more you're fabricating, you're building routines in your, in your body, you know, like, and just how you like to do things, what order you like to do things in, and you're constantly learning, you know, so just be diverse. That's my advice for this week. Thank you guys for watching this video. We will see you next Friday. And remember, Learn something every day.